sit. Sit down, fool. I've got nothing to ask you. You missed all the fun. This this nothing. seems familiar. I'm on the right side. I know. We always okay. make sure we know how to sit. Who knows a show called Retro Replay? <laughs> if we ever sit on the other <laughs> opposite side of the couch, people are like going, no, I don't like no. it. It's like when Troy parts his hair the other way, the world loses its cool. That's why he's just going straight back. Look at that. You can surf on that hair. That's nice. That's real nice. Now, talk about Retro Replay. Before you came here, maybe this is why you're so late, what? you had a fan meet in London. Yeah, dude. I saw the photo, it looked amazing, what some people have been taking. And you were on a ship. We weren't on a ship. Look at that. We were on the ship. We were on the uh, that replica. That ship was the ship. Replica of Sir Francis Drake's ship, the Golden Hind, which he circumnavigated the globe in. And this ship, this replica, has actually was manned by a crew and actually went around the world twice. So, which is, seems foolish and just... And true story is the width of this stage. Yeah, the whole thing. Something that circumnavigated the globe is the width of this stage. That's terrifying. terrifying. And we got on it. You know what's the most disappointing part, though? You were on a ship. Yeah. You didn't reenact Titanic. Who would have been Kate? Who would have been Leo? I think I would have been Leo. Yeah, because I would have let him drown. <laughs> now, sorry, I don't like that. I don't know about you, but you say you want to see what that would look like. That's years of stand up right there. That's exactly what it is. Come on, I want to see the reenactment if used to is if you did Titanic. Who am I, Kate? I'm, 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 I'm Kate Winslet? Yeah, you you're so stupid, Rose! You're so stupid! <laughs> That's a line from the movie! <laughs> Don't let go, Troy! Don't let go! You should have pushed her off the boat. <laughs> Never let go, Rosemary. Let, gotta, gotta let go. Gotta let go. Sorry. Sorry. You're gonna drown. Sorry. There was enough room. By the there way. There was enough room! There was enough hey, room. Hey, hey. Here's a thought. Sweet. You know, hey. Uh, ten minutes on, ten minutes off. We, we, keep talking. No. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. bye. <laughs> I love you forever. Let go. Let, let go, go. Let go. Let go. I'm I sorry to ruin that movie for you. Now with these two starring, it'd be a, the oh best parody ever. You're so stupid, Rose. We went and saw that because they re-released it in the theaters and we're sitting there and I was like, oh my god, my wife is the biggest fan of this movie. And her bright-eyed face was like, this movie is a piece of shit. It was like so, <laughs> oh, it was so bad. And when he said, you're so stupid, Rose, we all were like, that's an abusive boyfriend. <laughs> I mean, I get he's supposed to be Irish. No. <laughs> so, how you had a question. The, yeah, how was the fan meet in London? What was that like, meeting all those fans, having fun on a ship? Dude, it was the coolest thing. We thought that maybe eight people would show up to this thing. We had, we've been in Johannesburg, uh, South Africa. Uh, really? Well, you're lost. Why are you here? Uh, all of that. All of cowboy. Yeah. All of this was from all Johannesburg. Cowboy. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it was real good. Sorry. So all of, uh, yeah. we went out to Johannesburg, we had two days in London, and we're like, well, we, we can either just sit here in our hotel rooms and be sad and drink a water goodness, or we can go out and do something cool. So the last two days we're like, hey, what if we just did a replay meetup? We knew that the 26th was going to be outbreak day. Um, there was a little announcement on the 24th. <laughs> do you know what the game The Last of Us is? Yeah. Okay. So, who knows Uncharted? Yeah. I love Scotland. <laughs> so, we decided, why don't we do this, and then, you're very good. Yes, you're very talented. We love you, Nolan. So, uh, you shut your mouth. This guy, this guy, Gary, um, who takes care of the Golden Hind, said, well, why don't you guys come do it on the deck of our ship? So we did that, and then uh, 75 people showed up in the middle of the day, in the middle of the week, to come and just hang out with us for two hours. Um, and we all got down into the hold of the ship and just had this great little Q&A 
um, hang, we drank beers together, and we celebrated Outbreak Day together. <laughs> You're learning. Um, so it was, it was super fun. This was a great moment. We had... That's me. That was it. Um, the coolest part of this, and this is why we love our channel so much, is that everybody that's there met everybody, and everybody left with a friend uh, and a smile. Um, you also told people to stop back after as well and hang out for a member, right? So you told everyone to stick around, get the noise of and make some new friends. Yeah, it, the, the gamified the meetup. So if you took a picture and, if, and it was like, hey, if you're in the shot, you had to go and get everybody's handle, YouTube, name, exactly. whatever, so that at the end of it, you could send the picture to them, add them on Twitter or Instagram, and connect. And that's all we want to do is we want to build this community. And there's a lot. Where are my replayers at? Woo! Right. This is why we're here is because you guys, we're coming to see you. You're not coming to see us. You feel me? So that's why we're here. Now, talking about connection, you obviously have great chemistry. You'll deny it, say so you don't like each other, but you just have great chemistry. And there's obviously a romance of trolling. Troy and Nolan. I love that I'm first. <laughs> yeah, but no, it doesn't sound as good. Doesn't. It sounds like a stroke. <laughs> he always finishes first. So, obviously... <laughs> You're on fire today. <laughs> I, I, I'm just, I'm drunk. <laughs> I'm in Scotland, I'm drunk. Moving on. Hey! Okay. Now, I want to play a game of Mr. and Mrs. but Mr. and Mr. And obviously, I thought, you know what? Right. I've got a club print at work. Go a bit crazy. He always has something. <laughs> you know me so well. So, I'm going to ask you some questions, and you're going to hold up. Yeah, the try photo didn't turn out as good as I expected. All right, all right. I think it was great. <laughs> so many jokes. I, I, it, it's like literally oh, just like joke. This is this is the constipation face. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, that's like, like Mr. North, come out with your hands up. We have you surrounded. Funny or not, that's Nolan, they found the body. The police station website. So that was. That's really that's where you would find that, or post office, or milk carton. All right, go ahead. So, okay, so what's I'm going to ask a question, and you're going to reveal to us who is the one most likely to be that way, and then we'll see if you agree. So, for example. Who is the grumpiest in the mornings? Yeah. Okay, let's do a really tough one. Who is the best game player? <laughs> That's in Australia. Who is most likely to have a tantrum when they don't win a game? Although... Anybody who knows, he did get a little upset. Who has the biggest potty mouth when playing a game? <laughs> not on camera. <laughs> on camera. Watch Shaq Fu. I did not. There was. My mother called me. <laughs> it was <laughs> not. <laughs> okay. Ow. I chipped a tooth. Who is most likely to eat the last bit of food and lie about it? Last bit of food and lie about it? <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm, just, I'm a liar. I, I'll, lie, I'll lie to my mother. I don't care. <laughs> Even though she's a beauty. <laughs> yes. Who is the better looking? Back in my day, I could, I put a few bags on mattresses. <laughs> but now I just want to go to now sleep. Now it's just your own. <laughs> <laughs> I sleep on my side. Final question, and we'll move on. Who is most likely to take these photos home and cuddle them when they sleep? What's that? Who is most likely to take these photos home and cuddle them when they sleep? <laughs> We work together a lot. <laughs> uh, that's the button, right? You do the button, and like both of us. I'm gonna hold your picture while looking at mine. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm so glad he said hold the picture when he looks at it. <laughs> but you can keep them. Those, those are yours. Oh, we absolutely will. You're welcome. <laughs> so let's talk retro replay. Okay. You know, it's a fairly new YouTube channel compared to most, but it already has such a strong fan base, such a strong following. What is it like knowing that you've had this impact on so many people around the world enjoying watching your content? It never surprises us. Like when we, again, we didn't think that we, we were down in Johannesburg, we're 10,000 miles away from home, which sounds like a made up number. And we walked out uh, Sunday night to do our retro replay live show. Who's coming tomorrow for that? Okay, cool. Um, and it was packed, and we didn't think that it, we're like, no one's gonna know what this thing is. And people showed up, and we had an amazing time. It was probably one of the best shows we've ever had. Um, and the reason why, there's a song that we're gonna sing, spoiler, and they started singing it before we did. I was like, what the crap? People know this already. Um, the fact that people show up at super late on Thursday evening or your Friday morning sometimes to chat live with us um, blows us away. And it's been the greatest thing. We've had some funny jokes and some great moments, but the greatest accomplishment this thing has done in the last year and a half is it's made friends that would not have been. Brandy, where are you at? Bam. Brandy came from Texas just to hang out with Kelly in Sweden. See? It's that shit, man. Yeah. So that's, this is why we're not on this couch, but this is why we get on the couch, is because two people literally across the world from each other can find friendship. And get tattoos together! They got tattoos together! What did you get? I didn't... Is that Pokemon? I can't see it. Wolf and Tiger. Or Wolf and, uh... Two Wolves. Two Wolves. Two Wolves walk into a bar. Yeah. And now... I don't know if anyone saw the promo this week for Retro Replay where you had a little bit of a fight. I mean... We had a disagreement. Okay. Because of the game. The game choice. But we found a compromise. Found a compromise. Yeah. Did you hear what we're talking about? So, the, the, the first... Uh, do we have it? I don't think we've got it handy. We can try and find it. We'll get it out towards the end. Uh, but we... Uh, so with the Retro Replay was born out of, um, you know, we're going to play some old games and kind of, you know, get through it. And, it, and he found out that I had never played Uncharted, uh, ever, any of them. Uh, and he's, then he, he came up with the idea that people need to see this. Uh, so we did. Uh, we, did a, we did the definitive playthrough on the channel. Uh, where I went through, played poorly. Um, not going to lie. I didn't, I, somebody today gave up, uh, who was that, came up today and gave me a t-shirt, Circle is for Cover. <laughs> Where's Kelly? It's Kelly, right? It's Cassie. No, Cassie, right? Yes, Cassie gave me the t-shirt. He didn't give it to me, he gave it to him to give to me. It was, she didn't want to stand in your line. <laughs> there wasn't a line. No, I'm kidding. There was a huge line. <laughs> huge line, it was huge. It's a huge line. It's the best line. Hey, Ball don't lines. laugh. You guys got your own crazy hair blonde dude that's trying to run this country, so slow your roll a little bit. <laughs> but that's, they're like a sitcom. They should get together. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Trump and Boris going through the country, messing it up just as fast as they can. Hey! <laughs> Live on Retro Reap 2020. So, to answer your question, sorry. Uh, so we had the we, we kind of put it out to the to the community. What as Troy says, what do we play next? Um, and everybody was like, going to be Uncharted 2, right? And then we got a bunch of people who said we should be playing Last of Us. And yeah, so we got into a little scuffle and then decided why not play both. So that was what the big announcement was the other day and. Uh, yeah, so if you subscribe to the channel for free, uh, please, you know, just click on that link and then you can watch me fail over and over and over. I feel it's like the most they deserve a little bit more of a woo-woo because we just announced we're going to play Uncharted 2 and The Last of Us at the same time. That's what we're talking about. That's what you call a crowd pleaser. Can we have a 10 hour video of just Nolan failing? Not how we can do 10 hours on YouTube, just you failing? We can do 20. <laughs> There's a lot of failing up there. We, we got to hear a lot of Kid and Nate. <laughs> we got to hear a lot of Joel! Joel! <laughs> I played more of that. If you know, anybody know when, when you die in the game, it goes to black and white? 
I saw more black and white than color. <laughs> it was like, oh, oh. Yeah, the death screens are a little different in The Last of Us. <laughs> uh, you know the one where the bloater does the... Yeah, that's gonna be a fun one. You know what I think? What's funny is like, we mo everything but the actual death. And it's funny that, like, it's almost like the family guy limbs when Nate Black dies. Dog. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a glitch. It's like, no, you just you broke every bone in your body when you <laughs> fall from that height. So, talking about fans, I've asked you this question, God, I've been speaking for you for over a year now, really. I'm sick of asking you questions, so I opened it up to Twitter. Now, this is how big a fan base you have. And no one follows me on Twitter, yet I got loads and loads of questions. So, people are checking out your hashtag all of the time, which is amazing. So, I found some questions so that way your fans can ask you Ooh. some of those. So, I believe they'll load them up on the screen any second now. Hey. There we go. So, they've probably had this 1,000 plus times, but what advice could they give to anyone trying to make it in the acting, voice acting business? And that is Elliot. I just, I just quit. <laughs> Just don't try. Don't even try. Uh, you know, somebody once said that, that if you can do anything else, do it. And you think about it, it's funny, but then you're like, oh, I, I think I know what you mean. It, it, it's something that's really kind of deep, deep inside you that you, you know, you, you're driving thing that you, you want to try. And I found that the success was in the trunk. And it just, I don't want to live my life and look back and I wish I had done this, I wish I had done that. Um, I think the most important thing for any actor to understand is that you're enough. Don't try to play a character. Uh, play you as that character. Um, I remember learning one time, like, I went in for a role, I prepared, I was ready, and I thought I nailed it, and I didn't get it, and I was talking to uh, an acting coach I was working with at the time, and he said, and I did the scene for him, he says, it's really good. This is not you. And I said, I don't understand what you mean. He said, he said, you're playing, what's it? He said, what's the character's name? He said, Paul. He goes, you're playing Paul, the lawyer in Cleveland, Ohio. He said, be Nolan, the lawyer in Cleveland, who happens to be named Paul. And it was just, I know it's a weird little twig, but if you just, I, I would almost, it, it, it just, it, it become, comes off as false. It comes off as disingenuous, this, this kind of, you're, you're you're acting, and when you can tell you're acting, you're not just being. And it just, it just, and it, 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 and it's, if you're gonna be in a series, if you're gonna do a movie for any length of time, a video game, uh, like Uncharted or Last of Us, you have to be as genuine and authentic uh, in that character as you should be in your own life. And that that's something that stuck with me, and since I, Learn that I think I got better uh, at doing that. It's brilliant. The only thing that I would add to it is just remove that little slash. There's there's no difference. Acting is acting is acting is acting is acting, and you sometimes get a job that requires you to do this and a job that requires you to do this. Don't try to qualify going in. Just do exactly that. You said three words that I heard resonate over here. Those three words are so powerful. You are enough. Just you. Don't try to impress anybody ever. Cool? Awesome answer. Okay, we have the next one coming up now. What would Troy's perfect hat look like? Color, material, number of skulls, dangling off it. I think I know why you chose this question. What? <laughs> number of skulls dangling? Um, I have, for... I'm not wearing it today. So many things could be switched out for the word skulls. Than yeah. Dicks. <laughs> wow, you just went right to it, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, my, I, mean, I, have, I have a fair collection of, of, of hats and chapeaus and trilbies. Um, I'm trying to figure out why is zero skulls dangling off of it. Uh, it would, would probably be... Uh, yeah, I don't know why I need skulls. There should be no hat. Unless you're doing something like for Dia de la Muerte, and you have like a little fringe hat, there should be no skulls. No skulls. Do you have no to skulls. buy an extra large hat just to keep your hair in the perfect condition? He just uses mine. <laughs> uh, because I have a big hat. 
No, if I if I'm wearing if I'm wearing a hat, it's because I have, I have quit. <laughs> it's there's no. Uh, this is one reason why I did a mohawk. A because I'm in my 40s and I've got an awesome son. I'm like, why not? Um, and then as long as I can control it, I'm gonna do stuff with it. Why are we talking about my hair? Next question. I was gonna ask for gel tips because, well, you can see. Right, next question. So, if you could cosplay I anyone, see. If you could cosplay anyone, who would it be and why? By the way, sorry for poking your eye out. And I believe this is from Manchester, so I remember seeing that cosplay as well. So now I understand why the skull is dangling from it. It's a totally different person. It's just very weird coincidence. I, you know, we get a chance to see a lot of amazing cosplayers. People come up, and you're going to the cons, people coming up to see us. <laughs> I go, I'm just like, I, I love the, Na the Nathan Drakes because it's like jeans and a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you get the guy who's like, I'm a transformer and I have 27 pounds of plastic. Uh, fully and articulating and working. <laughs> sweating and just going, that's a lot of work. Um, less is more for me just because I'm lazy. But I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. Why. Princess Peach. I think I'd be great at that. Nailing it. Nailing it. I, I saw once a nine-year-old young man. You're a little too enthusiastic about it. It was like a nine-year-old kid that was cosplaying as Michael Douglas from Falling Down. <laughs> where was that? And I don't remember where it was. That's awesome. It was, and I was the only one. This was a cool, like, if, if you're, if that's the character you chose to cosplay as, you're a cool kid. And I looked at him, and I'm like, Sonny, I look at him, and I went, dude, are you Michael Douglas from Falling Down? And he looks up at me and goes, you're the only one to get it. I'm like, I want to be your best friend. Like, you're a <laughs> I was like, people were like, are you just like an angry Mormon? What, have you seen the movie Falling Down? Yeah. So you understand it. It's like the, the pocket protector, the glasses, the white short sleeve shirt at the time. I was like, are you like a dust for Falling Down? Like, way, that, that's going to be the most cynical fourth grader on the planet. Ever. <laughs> Ever. It's like, I'm over it. You just get you do your homework. Class? What's the point? What's the point? <laughs> um, I, if, if you know anything about me, I have a, a real big obsession with Daredevil. Um, I, I, would, I wouldn't mind doing that. I wouldn't mind, like, cosplaying as Daredevil. Um, I need to get my abs, like, in way better shape, because I ain't doing, like, there's some Spider-Man walking around here, and I'm like, what's up, y'all? I, I see you working. Um, but yeah, that'd be fun. And you could do the mask, and maybe no one would know who I am. Now, to flip that question around, okay. if you had the dress Nolan in a cosplay, what would it be? And if you had the dress Troy in a cosplay, what would it be? So you could choose their outfit. And then make this a Halloween retro replay where you make oh, them wear the outfits. 100% Pennywise for him. <laughs> just torture. And then like dump a bucket of spiders on him. Just, just torture. I would, I would dress him as Daredevil to make his dreams come true and make him happy. <laughs> But I guess the spiders are funny too. Well played. That was well played. Feeling like shit now? <laughs> That's what we do. Good friends. Let's thank each other for like shit. Right, you know what? I want to come out to you guys now because does anyone have any questions? No, brilliant. Right, I'll continue. No, I'm going to come out. So I saw your hand first. I'll come to you. So. Did you two sort of decide this yourselves, or did someone approach you to discuss it? <laughs> the story keeps morphing, but we always want to. We always enjoy doing things together. There used to be Q and A panels at cons uh, for a long time, where you know I would be on the north, and then Troy would be next, or vice versa. And at some point, one of us—I don't remember who—started. We'd, we'd start crashing each other's panel and I personally found that the last end of that whenever you crash the panel it got more interesting funny you know and, and, and people seem to have a better time so when I charted four we were doing promotion for that we did a lot of the Q&A things together at cons and then I, 
camera. Somehow we ended up in this, this studio with our, our producing partners and just said, hey, you know, people play your games. Wouldn't it be an interesting perspective? You guys playing games and uh, the first time we ever did the show, we sat down and we got the cameras ready and they were like, well, what are you going to do? We're like, we have no idea. No idea. Turn it on and let's see what happens. Uh, do you have anything? I mean, yeah, I mean, I've always found it mind-blowing that he had never, up till, you know, a few months ago, had never played Uncharted. And I was like, you have to do that. But, in order to understand how great it is, you really need to understand, you need to meet the giants upon whose shoulders we are standing. And so it's like, let's take this all the way back. And we started playing through these retro titles. There's a lot that I played that I was excited about him experiencing, and there's a lot that I didn't get to play because I didn't have a lot of money growing up. Um, and before there were Let's Plays, I would go over to my friend's house and watch them play, and every once in a while I'd be like, can I, can I see you for a second? No. Um, so this was my chance to go back now and actually play through these things. So we kind of always knew that at some point we were going to play Uncharted, but we didn't know when. Um, and so it finally just got to the point where we discovered this love, he had this language that was built and was like, now it's time, now let's play through Uncharted. Um, and we were able to bring in our friend, Jack Septic Guy, to say, hey, would you help us kick this off? Uh, and, and he was kind enough to kind of be like, let's do a playthrough. Do you know who Jack Septic Guy is, right? Oh, cool. Seven people. Um, he's quite popular. Um, so yeah, so we kind of always knew that this is where we were going. Um, we had no idea that this is where we would be. Does that make sense? Cool. Uh, next question here. Uh, what do you think of the Uncharted short film starring Nathan Fillion? Uh, it was great. You know, he's a, he's been a fan forever. As he said, uh, you know, it was an itch he wanted to scratch, and he he scratched it. Uh, you know, it was great. You know, he he got one thing wrong though. It's always punch. He he he. he in the one part, he went, "Kitty got wet," and it's punch. Kitty got wet. You, get, you don't punch it, the kitty got wet. That's the after part. You gotta wait till he's down. So he's lying on the ground going, Kitty, what? Yeah, I scratched it. Okay, next question. I'll just add to that. Uh, everyone asking about an Uncharted movie. Um, there have been four, five, if you want to count Golden Abyss. <laughs> And they're movies that you get to play. I don't know if I need another one. I don't know if I need one that I don't get to play. You know what I mean? Because I don't know if that's an Uncharted thing. Anybody else feel the same way? Yeah. Nine people. All right. <laughs> anyway, um, Troy, Nolan, uh, you've had experience with motion capture throughout the vast majority of your acting roles. What advice would you give if any of us happened to be doing any motion capture work? Uh... Motion capture work is basically theater. So any, anybody who's done, any actor who's done theater, it's the same thing except your costume happens to be this ridiculously tight suit. Uh, but, you know, the thing is, uh, Gordon Hunt, who's the director of the first three Uncharted, uh, he was brilliant, and one of the things that he, he used to preach to us was stay specific. Uh, you know, keep it small, keep it real. Uh, I remember when, early in my career when, uh, when people would, uh, we'd go into voice games that had been uh, mo-capped at the time, motion captured by stunt people, sometimes uh, people worked at the developing, development office. Uh, you know, you, you, we would watch what they did and have to dub what their movements. And there's always that guy who would sit there, let me tell you something, I'm getting out of here, and it would be this, all these, these gestures and just ridiculous movement when nobody talks like that. Um, you know, you, you, not once have I said, that was funny. This is, hmm. You know, you keep it small, keep it real, uh, authentic. We go back to that word authentic. Um, I think um, staying specific with movements. You know, little things, su keep subtle, all that kind of thing. It's it's not uh, anything, it's not a skill that, anything you would do on, the, on a live stage or in a movie, or it's the same thing. Like Troy said earlier, 
there's no hash, there's no slash between acting, voice acting, motion capture. It's all the same. Everything that informs you as an actor in TV and film, the sets, the props, your wardrobe, all of that is gone. It's gone. It's, it's stripped from you. You are forced to focus on what you inherently and quintessentially understand about that character and uniquely understand about the character. Because our set is a soundstage and our props are made of foam and our wardrobe wear good underwear. It's very revealing. Um, and you've got a camera that's mounted eight inches from your face with a light that illuminates your face whenever you're rolling. And you have to ignore it. And you have to ignore it. And so does the other person. You're, you're looking at what that other person is wearing and their camera and their face, and you realize, I look that ridiculous? So you have to overcome those obstacles. And it, I've seen people who put, are put in that situation when they don't have those trappings to rely on actually reduce their performance and it actually become way more nuanced and small. Because once they get over that fear, it actually becomes a, a much more grounded thing because they, they don't have all these things to kind of tether themselves to. Um, so yeah, be specific is, is, is a really great thing to tell somebody. But also just make sure that in any role that you have, no matter what the medium that you're performing it in, that there's something that you know about that character that nobody else does and you ground yourself in that. Cool. Who else? I love your beanie, by the way. The daredevil beanie. It's yours. Can I have it? I'm joking. Please, I don't want it. You go. Hello. Hello. Um, what are some of the biggest changes that you've noticed since you've been working in the games industry? And also, is somebody feeding through while you guys are away? <laughs> I heard one of the biggest changes. What did I miss? Did you? What? Is anyone feeding Drew? Did you let him out? No, we left some newspapers down. Yeah, he'll be fine. And he's got one of those like gerbil things. Like, like and he, he eats his own poo. He does. For uh, fun, we can't keep him from doing it. Uh, the, the, um, <laughs> some of the biggest changes um, that I've seen uh, just it goes to, it, it's again, acting, it, our job is to deliver a performance. Microphone, camera, mocap stage, live theater, doesn't matter. Deliver the performance. The biggest changes have come on the developer's side where, um, perfect example quickly is Un Uncharted Drake's fortune. Drake and Elena run over, jump into a Jeep and take off. They rented a Jeep for the day. Um, and it, it had like mouse droppings and smelled of urine, it was terrible. We jumped in a couple times, banged our knees because it was all metal and the seats were kind of dirty. By the time Uncharted 2 came around, I'm like, well, where's the Jeep? And they go, well, no, we don't have it. They they have these uh, wooden blocks that they kind of put together, kind of like uh, Legos, to look exactly like a Jeep. We don't really need a Jeep because, um, you know, it's not markered. We, we, it's a digital Jeep. Got it. Uncharted 3 comes along. And now it's not even, we don't even need it to look like a Jeep. We got seats and a flatbed and steering wheel. There's a pedal here. Uncharted 4, it's like, here's your steering wheel. Go grab two chairs. <laughs> because we don't need, it just got pared down because the technology was easier. And I'll, going back to what Troy was saying about motion capture performances, the, the thing about it is somebody once asked me, they said, how do you, when they came to the studio, which at the time, you know, looks like this room. And they go, how did, how do you do this? There's nothing here. I said, yeah, or there's everything. It's your imagination. You're running around like a kid. And you know, I can still remember that Uncharted 2 where I jumped from the train, from the truck. They had wooden Jeep. And I remember sitting there and they were like, are you sure you want to do this? I'm like, yeah, this is fun. I was still young enough to be able to do it. And I jumped and I grabbed onto the thing and you know, I had to do that heroic thing. And it was like, yeah, it was one of the coolest moments because we were playing and it was so much fun. That was the same time that we also did where I jumped up and she goes, 
I, I said, come on, scooch over. And she, scooch? And she made that up right on the spot. That was the spontaneity and the, and the, the brilliance of it. We were kids playing. And especially in that, uh, that, that particular uh, project, you're, you're, well, you're playing in your backyard, your kids, that's the clubhouse, uh, now it's a treasure uh, ship, and the, the lawn is the ocean, and go. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Oh, oh. it's because you yeah, don't really believe in time as a construct. <laughs> Why do you not believe that? Because it's know, like, because I'm it's tired, tired, sleepy person. Does anybody know who this is? Yes, it's on news, and I am on news. Now I'm running for government. <laughs> for now those who don't know who it is, it's a very confusing face on your face right now. Watch the okay. show, it makes a lot more sense. Uh, so, if you haven't subscribed to Retro Replay, go do that. And if you're around tomorrow, please, please, come check out the live uh, Do you live know what show. time we're doing it at? 3.30. 3.30. It's 2.30. 2.31. Okay, he has a theory that everybody's 2.30 is the most talked about time. And now I'm, I've ruined, I've polluted all your minds. 2.30, you're going to start hearing that. Time's your appointment. It's the what most you reference time. 2.30. And it's a dad joke. When do you know when it's time to go to the dentist? It's 2.30. 2.30. Very funny. And I'll they'll have two. more jokes like that at their autograph booth and no doubt photos are available as well for the yes. rest of the weekend as well yes. so yes. please check them out you can see they're absolutely amazing subscribe to the retro replay and i hope please. to see you again in the future you will and i'll have more silly games for you as well because i know how much you love them let's go to try norlin Lucky gal in the front row has my face. Oh, I gotta go. Troy and Nolan.